So welcome back. We're going to finish up our lessons with dividing fractions. So let's look at just something like, for instance, if we had, say, $5 divided in a half, divide, divided by a half. What that's essentially saying is, is how many halves does it take to get five? Remember, for every division problem, there's also this multiplication problem. So five, has to, five divided by one half is going to be something, which means that something times a half should give it back to five. So what I'm also thinking is how many halves does it take to get to a five? Well, I do know it takes two halves to get a whole. So it sounds like it's going to take ten halves to give me um, five. So if I put a ten here, ten halves would indeed give me the um, same thing as five. So it does check out. So a lot of us find that thinking a little strange. So what we look for is patterns. Remember when I said divide by 10 earlier, we multiplied by a half. Or if I said divide by a 2, I'm sorry, if I divide by a 10, we multiplied by 1 tenth. If I divided by 2, we multiplied by a half. So what we're learning is division is closer, closely related to multiplying by what we call the reciprocal. Uh, in elementary terms, we call it the Kentucky chicken fried method. So in other words, we keep change and flip. So we Kentucky chicken fried, if you will. So our strategy basically is to keep the first fraction the same. We want to change division and multiplication, because that's legal. And we can uh, flip the second fraction, and we can just make this a multiplication problem, which the, the methodology is a lot easier if we deal with um, multiplication of fractions. So instead of trying to figure out how many seven fourths go to negative one fifth, I can just change the problem to negative one fifth, keep, change to multiplication, and flip that to four sevenths. And then all I gotta do now is uh, cancel out any like factors. I don't see any like factors happening, so you just multiply straight across, and I would get negative four thirty fifths. And there you go. Um, so that's a nice little strategy to divide fractions. So if I have negative three halves divided by negative ten sevenths, what I can do is keep the negative three halves, change division to multiplication, as long as I flip that to um, a negative seven over uh, a 10. A lot of times, I will keep the negative in the numerator. It doesn't matter, as long as it goes in the top or bottom, I usually like to keep it in the top. And I don't see any like factors dividing out, so multiply straight across, I end up with 21 over uh, 20. And that would be my result for that problem. So keep change flip works pretty nice. Negative 9 fifths divided by 2. First off, I need to see that 2 as a fraction. So I can change 2 to a fraction by putting that 2 over 1. So anytime I have a whole number, remember a whole number, if I just put that over 1, it becomes a fraction. Now we can change this to a negative 9 fifths. So we're going to keep the negative 9 fifths. We're going to change the division to multiplication as long as I flip that to a 1 half. If we multiply straight across, we get negative 9 over 10. So it looks like nothing happens there. It, it, that's solid. So it just simplifies down to, or stays as negative 9 tenths. So 1 9 divided by, and again, it's a good idea to change this to a, a fraction. So we leave a negative out. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So we leave that as negative 4 thirds. And then we can Kentucky chicken fry it, keep, change, flip, one ninth times then a negative three fourths. Again, I just feel like standard practice in algebra is, if all possible, keep the negative in the numerator. If, if it needs to be stuck in the denominator, that's fine. In the end, uh, we'll play from there. But I always like to keep the negative in the top. So on this one, I did see something going on here. That 9 and 3 have some common factors, so I can divide a 3 out. That changes to a 1, that changes to a 3. And then I have a negative 1, I have a 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1, over 12. So I end up with a negative 1 twelfths as my answer. So hopefully I, you find those examples useful. And that concludes our lessons on fractions. Stay tuned.